Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of mine. This time I'm back with Only Friends episode 5. I actually got the feeling that Ray is pulling the same stunt with Sand like Boston is pulling with Nick. They are both not getting the guy they want so they use another guy for collateral damage. And we can actually see the signs like Nick actually likes Boston, but Boston is just using him because he can't have top. And Sand likes Ray, but Ray is just using him because he can't have Mew. So this is gonna be an actual issue. I hope that this episode proves me wrong, but at the moment I have the feeling that he's actually just using Sand and it hurts me because it's not necessary. Like, they don't have to use someone else to get over someone, okay? It's just not okay to play with someone's emotions like that. But, like I said, I hope this episode proves me wrong. If you like this kind of content, please consider giving it a like. For full and uncut reaction videos, you can check out my Patreon. The link is in the description box below. And without further ado, let's us watch this episode. <laughs> He's just showing how it actually feels like. Like, I just started working a month ago after I finished school. Now I'm doing my apprenticeship. It's a complete new adjustment that you have to do. It's nothing like school. Work life is nothing like school. And what we see is also a student. He sleeps, he eats, he goes to school, he studies. In the evening, he plays at the bar and then he sleeps. This is literally a normal day of work life. I have the feeling that he barely has time for himself. Like he barely has time to work on himself. I assume that he doesn't really have like social life. He's more of an introvert, I assume. He doesn't really have much people to hang out with. He knows a lot of people because he's doing his business almost everywhere. At the bar, he's singing in school as in in university he's selling his stuff in bars he's selling his stuff in clubs so he gets around people know him but he doesn't actually get very close to anyone so i assume this is supposed to show that what he's doing with ray is something out of context for him he doesn't really get affectionate with anyone. He's more of a person on his own. He works alone. He just does his thing. And he never really intended that to change. Now Ray has started to get up into his personal space. And the problem here is that Sand likes it. Because with time, if you don't have anyone around you, you are always alone. Sooner or later, you get lonely. But depending on what type of person you are, you will just like think, oh, it's normal and I'm okay like this. Like, I don't need anyone in my life. I have to work to survive any certain type of job I have to do in order to provide for myself. I will do it because there is no one like giving me money for free. Like, I have to earn it. So he is pretty determined and he seeks his things through. Now, Ray popping into the pictures taking a lot more time on his mind because we saw last episode that he broke his guitar because he was that frustrated that angry because ray stood him up and nick came into the room and he was like oh you broke it that's your favorite thing as in you love your guitar you love to play if you break it, you can't play it anymore. As in, one of your life pleasures was stripped from you because of something else that came into your life. As in, because Ray came into his life, he's making him lose all focus that he's actually not capable anymore to enjoy the things that he used to. He's actually not there with his mind. He's not realizing that he's losing control over the situation, losing control over himself just because of Ray. Ray actually is making him lose focus. He's distracting him so much, he's occupying so much space in his mind 
that he's losing sight of what he wants, as in he's losing sight of what he enjoys. The things that used to make him happy just aren't making it anymore for him. Now he's seeking something that he can't have. If you want to see it like this because Ray is still hung up on Mew. We saw it last episode when he tried to kiss him. So right now he got the taste of something that he never really came across like he never actually had the desire to be with someone he had one night stands we know that but he never considered anyone as a long time thing and Ray is making him rethink that and he's making him actually lose control over the situation and I'm scared for him I'm scared of what that could mean for him yeah yeah literally what I said hell no like I said, he's losing sight of who he is when Ray is involved. I am so good, oh my god. Like he's actually losing sight of what was once dear to him as soon as Ray is involved. He's occupying that much space in his mind that Ray is the only thing he thinks about. Help me with something else. It's all him. Well, what do you need? <laughs> oh my god. Yes, he needs help. And by stop, hold up. I, I need a second. I cannot. No. This is, this is too early. This is too early. This is too early in the episode. I can't deal with this. Oh my god. Okay. 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 I I, I need to reverse. I need to watch this scene again. Okay. <clears throat> Wanna? Huh? Yes. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. It's so subtle things for me. He's actually like, did you have a rough night? And he's like, yeah, kind of. As in, they are all having sex in mind. I love it so much. He's like, unlike you, I don't have someone to take care of me. As in, <laughs> he, I'm pretty sure that he saw the scene between these two before he announced his presence. He was like, you know what? I'm just gonna see what they will be doing. He actually had his hand in his boxers. He was ready to help him. He literally cannot say no to him and this is a very dangerous territory that we're stepping into when you're actually i don't want to say obsessed but you're like insanely attached to someone and to the way they make you feel that you're ready to do everything they want in order to keep that feeling that that person is giving you for as long as you can I love the fact, though, that he's not gonna get too much into it, but he's gonna show them that he's not stupid. He's like, I don't have someone to take care of me. Like, I know that he takes care of you at night. <laughs> it's dangerous what they're doing with the sausage. <laughs> yes, I love it. I love it so much. These two are actually talking my language. Like, they're... It's those subtle flirtings for me. Those innuendos. Like he's actually slowly eating the sausage, you know? Slowly, as in, this could be your dick, sir. You have to know what you're doing to me. I can't do anything but to always want to have you around and give you what you want. Now, my friend here got in the way. Now you will have to dream about it, sir. You are not getting your way anymore, but I'm giving you a taste of what you've just missed. He did say in the last episode that he feels like he can't compare to him. He knows that Top is insanely muscular, so maybe he's like trying to build on muscles in hope that Boston will like that and so like him. Ah, uh, I can't. Like, this is actually physically hurting me. Like, this is when people try to get someone's attention of someone that is not worthy in this particular situation boston is not worthy of nick because he is so hung up on top he is not willing to see anyone else and he thinks that if he builds on muscles that boston is gonna be attracted to that and so he will like him and stop liking top that's not gonna work you do not have to change yourself for a guy or a girl i'm sorry if someone doesn't like you the way you are, then they do not deserve any of your time. Because you expect me 
to love and respect everything you are. Why can't I expect for you to love and appreciate everything I am? Everyone has insecurities. Everyone has something that they would probably like to change about themselves. I don't know. Maybe someone would like not to have some kind of sickness. Someone would like to have longer hair or a different hair color, a different eye color. Someone, maybe someone would like to be an extrovert instead of being an introvert. Someone would like to have less strict parents. Like everyone would like to change some aspect of their lives. But you are that person You are an introvert or you are an extrovert. You have blonde hair. You have blue eyes. Like this is who you are. Embrace who you are because there's only one of you. No one is going to be capable to copy you because you are one person. I heard that there are doppelgangers out there. People that actually look alike. But as soon as you start talking with one of those doppelgangers, you realize the difference. You may be capable to be the same on the outside, but on the inside you're different. Every single person is different. Accept your differences and appreciate them. Like a lot of people probably would love to have your sort of confidence or the fact to be capable to um, make people fall in love with you or your words. Like just accept that he's not going to be capable to get Boston by changing himself, by becoming more muscular. I'm just saying. Oh my god. He's actually gonna be glued to his ass the entire day. <laughs> Everything that owes him money. I respect San so much. My respect for this man keeps on growing. He's like, I have no one that gives me money. I have nobody giving me anything in life. Not everyone has it easy like you, as in being born with that much money. Not ever having to worry about going one day with an empty plate. You have always had it easier, as in money-wise, than me. It has nothing to do with his emotions and the fact that he seems seems to be emotionally damaged. I have the feeling I'm being so offensive by saying that, but sadly it is like that. He has no idea who he is without Mew, and that's why he immediately started to be glued to Sans' ass after Mew was like, you have to get over me. He always was hanging on to the thought that maybe sooner or later he and Mew could be more than just friends. And now that he said it strictly, you either get over me or we're not friends anymore, he had to move on. Like it wasn't even a question anymore. Because having Mew in his life is way more important to him than anything else. So now that he knows that there is nothing there anymore, it's like he lost his footing. And he has the feeling that Sand in a certain sense, I'm not saying that he could give him back his footing, but he feels some type of, let's just call it connection to him. Like he feels carefree when he's with Sand. Nothing with the love that he has for Mew. Even though I still believe that he just thinks that it's love and that it isn't actually love that he feels for Mew. But that's why he keeps on being with Sand. Sand is like, I don't have money, I have nobody giving me money, so I have to find a way to provide for myself. If that's singing, if that's selling drugs, if that's selling liquor, if that's selling clothes. I have to find some type of way to provide for myself. If selling clothes is gonna be capable to help me earn enough money to get through the month, I will do it. <laughs> My gosh, he's a stylist now. <laughs> he has been uh, playing your doll the entire day. You can take off the shirt. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Stop it. Hold up. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> What? He's trying to copy top style as well. Honestly, it's the fact that he fell in love with a bad boy like that. Knowing how cute Nick is. I mean, everyone has dark impulses. I've been talking to my friend lately about that because of the story that I'm writing right now. People, whether they like to admit it or not, everyone has dark impulses in general, like our emotions. We have good emotions and we have bad emotions. 
anger, hatred, envy, jealousy, those are all negative emotions. And uh, for some people, even desire or lust are negative emotions. Like it's considered a sin in religion. Those are dark impulses. And then we have positive emotions like love, caring about someone, being helpful, being considerate. Like those are positive emotions, but we still have both. We have good parts inside of us and we have bad parts inside of us. No one is good and no one is bad. We're both. Like it's it's a mixture of both depending on what happens in your life and depending which road you are going to choose to take from a specific point in your life. You will show either more positive personality traits or more negative personality traits. So I know that Nick also has like negative feelings, but what he has that Boston doesn't, or at least he's very, very good at hiding it, Nick is sensitive. He's sensitive. He's sentimental. He cares very, very deeply. As soon as he cares, he gets obsessed. That's also a negative emotion in general, like being obsessed with someone, like caring about someone, loving someone, that's one thing, but being obsessed is a dangerous territory so he is sentimental while boston literally isn't it's like he has risen above those emotions like he doesn't actually show much emotions nick knowing how boston is and what he's doing in his free time he heard it he saw it what kind of a person he is Like I said, I'm pretty sure he heard a conversation before he got Top to have sex with him. He saw it. How is he capable to love him? What made him fall in love with this man? Was it just the sweet words from Boston? Or the way he made him feel while they were having sex? Where is this insane love for him coming from that is willing to change everything about him just to meet Boston's liking? This is acting shallow because he's actually believing that if he changes his his appearance, as in working out, changing his clothes, which sadly Boston noticed. He was like, what happened with your clothes? Like, why are you wearing those type of clothes? You also seem to be more fit, as in have you been working out? Like he noticed that. He only likes the superficial stuff, as in he's shallow. That's not good. Because that shows that there is no fundamental feeling there. Maybe for Nick it is. Even though I don't see why he fell in love with him and I would like to understand. But for Boston it's just the superficial stuff. This is no love. Try convince me otherwise. That's you? (laughs) I'm sorry, are we seeing Top's face? He's actually staring at him. Okay. You find some place to hide. Oh shit. So I assume that they actually have money problems. I I feel people I don't even want to analyze this entire situation right now because it's actually making me feel sad. Okay, Sand is trying every single thing he can in order to provide for himself. That's what we got. But maybe he is willing to take on every single job that he can get his hands on because he's actually in debt. He has money problems that are that high that maybe loan sharks are coming asking for money and since the mom's trying to deal with those loan sharks but the money that she's getting isn't enough so sand was like i'm gonna try to take on as much jobs as i can in order to help you out with those debts so now the loan sharks came to her house demanded to be paid or let's just say she saw them from the window that the loan sharks were arriving and she's like i don't have any money to give them so he's like find a place to hide (laughs) yeah (laughs) 
นี่สนิทกันเนาะรู้จักกันทุกซอกทุกมุมเลยครับดีแล้ว What did he say? Stop. Hold up. Every knock and corner. This man does not know when to stop. He's actually like, I don't care. I'm even gonna say it in front of your mother. Who knows if she's gonna take the hint or not? It's fine with me though. Like I don't have anything to hide. This reminds me of a scene in the eclipse. Ak and Ayan were at. Ayan's house, and the mother like prepared food. They were eating, and he was like, "You're dating me. I'm your boyfriend." And the mother was like laughing in the corner. This is giving me very much that scene from the eclipse. He's like, "Oh, we know each other very well. Every nook and corner, as in I've seen everything of your son. Everything. There's no." <laughs> No stone unturned on his body that I haven't seen before. Literally, there is nothing that I've left untouched. If you know, you know. That's a great song to sing to him. He chose a song, a love song, in specifically, where it's like I've already fallen for you. As in, this is not a joke anymore. Like I actually want to be around you. I don't want to just tag along with you. I actually want something serious with you. I've fallen for you. Like get that in your head. He chose a song where he's actually expressing what he's truly feeling on the inside. I love the mom that she's now picking up on that. She's like, I don't think he's just a friend. He not. <laughs> He was the wrong person to call. I can't, people. Like I cannot with this man. He's actually giving up so many fake vibes. I can't with this. He was capable to say like just use a condom and sleep with him and it's fine. You know, I actually cannot. Mew is actually obsessed. Like he actually fell deep for top. Because in the beginning, Mew was like, nobody's gonna be capable to play with me. Like I'm playing them. I'm interested to find out what he's gonna do if I don't sleep with him. Don't worry, nobody's gonna be capable to break me. Boston actually used those words in order to like be capable to get him off top so that he could have him. And now Mew actually said it. I have the feeling that if I don't sleep with him, he's gonna get bored of me. Now he doesn't care anymore. Like he's actually willing to do something he's not comfortable with just yet, just because he's afraid to lose him. Now he doesn't care if he's gonna get dumped after Top sleeps with him. You know, even though we know he won't. But like, just imagine that. And Boston, literally, he being the fakest friend ever, he's like, oh, don't think that much about it. Just sleep with him because he actually has that small thought in the back of his mind that as soon as he sleeps with Mew, the top is not gonna care anymore about Mew, and he's gonna be capable to have a shot. Like literally, those delusional people. I love that this is tender and not forceful, like it was between Top and Boston. No, I love Top, eh? No, I love Mew. Now my thoughts here are actually for Sand. Sand knows that he was conceived through a one night stand. His mother had a one night stand with a guy, and she was knocked up. She didn't want to get an abortion, so she kept Sand and she raised him by herself. First off, like I said, mad respect. Like she kept him. Because in a certain sense, she would think like it her responsibility. She decided to have that one night stand. But Sand knowing this and him having random hookups with women, wasn't he ever like scared that something like this could happen to him? Like him knocking up some woman, wouldn't he be scared that something that what happened to his mother could like happen to one of his one night stands? <laughs> Damn! It's the fact that he immediately stopped pouring him the drink. That was his glass. That was Ray's glass, and he immediately stopped pouring the drink for him. He's like, "Oh, she drank herself to death, and you're trying to do the same. Is that why you're always drinking?" I'm pretty sure if he could, he would throw the glass from the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> It's the fact that they immediately jump to desire. 
ว่าเกนอมึงว่าเกนอมึงอันนี้มึงไอแซนี่ยังไงเนี่ย Oh my gosh, I hate it. But I love this parallel so much because this is the exact same line that Boston always uses when people ask about him and Nick. I love this parallel because now these guys are actually putting it like I said it before. Like Ray was actually giving me the feeling of Boston with Nick. Ray keeps on using sand to get over Mew while. Boston wants top, and he's using Nick to get over him, or like to distract himself. And every single time someone asks about Nick and Boston and what their relationship is, Boston keeps on saying we're friends. And Ray is doing the exact same thing now. What is going on between you and Sand? Oh, we're friends. Yeah, right. Friends <laughs> that just <laughs> hands off. This <laughs> is I need a few seconds to calm down. The tea, the tea that they're spilling. But you know what I think is intriguing? It actually looks like he didn't want Sand to know. Why didn't he want to know? Because I'm pretty sure that Ray knew. Ray knew that Sand was slowly getting attached, and he was like, as long as he doesn't know about Mew, he's gonna be like okay with me showing up, wanting to hook up with him, etc. You know. Because maybe there is a possibility for me to like him back, you know. But knowing that he has been in love with Mew, still, and him being with him the entire time, he's like he has been using me to get his mind of someone else. As in, he has been using me the entire time, and he was like the only thing he wants is for him to care about his feelings, especially if the both of us are friends. I want you to care about my feelings. And by doing that, he didn't take his feelings into consideration and just did what he needed to in order to ease his pain. And he didn't think about the pain he would inflict on Sand. So Sand finding that out, I'm intrigued to know it's gonna happen. <laughs> But please, you have to, in one way or another, smack Boston, smack him. <laughs> oh yes, I love. Smack him! I love it. Honestly, he needed that. He needed that. It doesn't excuse what Ray did, uh, pulling the same shit with Boston. But like, Boston needed that smack. He actually did because first of all, you don't record me without my consent, and you don't use it to blackmail me either or make me lose someone that I'm starting to like. I love it. <laughs> Oh, love it! I actually do because, in a certain sense, Boston is also right. this people. This scene is gonna break me because technically, Boston is right. He is right. Sand has a right to know, like the fact that they are friends with benefits. In a certain sense, does not give him the right to disregard his feelings. As soon as feelings are involved, the friends with benefits has to stop. Now. Sand was trying to ignore the fact that he likes him, but he can't do anything about his feelings. Like he actually is feeling something for a day, so he couldn't help but want to be around him. But he thought that there was no one in his life, and that he just never thought about wanting to be in a relationship with someone. Just like it was for him, you know. Sand never thought about anything serious, and he thought it was the same for Ray. Now, finding out that Ray has been in love with Mew the entire time, and he just started to hang out with Sand even more after Top and Mew became a thing, is making Sand realize what is actually the tea here. But him being that much in his business is not okay either. Like he has no right to air out that dirty laundry to everyone. Like this is not even Boston trying to protect Sand from being hurt. This is actually him doing all of this to spy Ray because he's actually going at Ray right now. Oh, see? Is it true? Hands off the bottle. <clears throat> he's trying to drink away his problems right now. You seeing how he desperately is holding onto the bottle? He is hurt. 
ไม่ได้เกี่ยวอะไรกับกูอยู่แล้วอะแซน See I love this You have to know when you hurt someone because Sand was in the last episode care about my feelings. You can't just call me at your back and call. Like you can't just come to me when you're lonely and dump me when you don't need me anymore. Care about my feelings. So top actually dropping it. He didn't have to say it that harshly, but he didn't lie. But Ray started to care about Sand. It's a fact, and as soon as you care, you care about that person's feelings too. The more he hangs out with him, the more he's starting to care about his feelings. Doesn't mean he's in love with him yet, but he cares about him, and he feels comfortable around him. That comfortable that he was willing to share one of the most hurtful things of his past with him, without him having like to beg in a certain sense, like you can trust me. It's okay. I'm not gonna judge or anything. He was actually saying, "You can tell me," and Sand saying, "Don't worry, this has nothing to do with me. Like it's okay." He's like Sand, like I know you're hurt. I know it's hurting you, and the fact that it is hurting him is hurting Ray. That already shows everything I need to know. I think all along that Ray is a hour twenty five. Yeah. Hour of special that I added to my life, and all the other twenty five hours of Ray. See, he's crying. He doesn't have me anymore. Oh my god! So next episode, they're gonna be at each other's throats because of their partner. They didn't need to be that dramatic, but I feel so bad. I feel so bad. <laughs> my heart broke for Sand because Sand actually was like, "I'm gonna make an effort," and since Ray is that special to me, even though I only have 24 hours, I'm gonna make an exception for him, and I'm gonna make it 25 hours, even though everyone only has. 24 hours. He's capable to make me extend a day to one hour more. Like my day doesn't have 24 hours anymore when I'm around Ray. It has 25 hours. So after discovering all of that, he's like, "No, it's not Ray time anymore. It's alone time because at the end of the day, I'm alone." He didn't actually care about me. He. In a certain sense, he actually is going through all of those thoughts that I listed back then. He has been using me the entire time that we were together. He was trying to get rid of someone else. He was trying to delete someone else from his mind, and he thought that I was the person that he could do that with. He thought he could play with my feelings, and I could be a Completely okay with that. He never ever cared once about my feelings and what him playing with me like that would put me through. This hurts me on a physical level, actually, because nobody deserves to feel like this. He actually was like in some sort of euphoria. Finally, I have someone that I'm willing to do the impossible for, and in a matter of a second, all of that completely vanished. He thought he was special because Ray was actually willing to do so much for him without Sand actually having to beg him. You know, as in he was like he's lenient to do what I ask him to do. So that means he's starting to get comfortable around me. He's starting to like me. So maybe this could be something. But him finding out that Ray's not over m e w made him completely reset all of those thoughts, and now he's broken. So next episode is gonna be interesting. I have the feeling that he's gonna completely close himself off from Ray because he can't deal with that pain anymore. Like he started crying for Ray. That means for him, it's. This stage where he can pretend that he doesn't actually love him has ended. He can pretend that he doesn't love him. It's over. Like he actually achieved that kind of feeling where he can act like everything is okay, that they can play around and nothing is gonna be capable to like happen if someone else should get someone else. It's too late for him. He is in love, and that's gonna completely change their dynamic after the drop Boston. Put on them. So next episode is g o i n g to be interesting. I love the confrontation between Ray and Boston in the preview. I'm ready to see that, and I'm ready to see what is g o i n g to happen between Mew and Ray's friendship because apparently they both are defending their loved one, as in their partner. Mew is defending Top. I don't think that Ray is defending Sand, but we know that Mew is defending Top. So 
this is gonna be interesting to see next episode but i hope you enjoyed it tell me in the comments below what you think was best and i will see you in another video bye